Hello everybody and welcome to a very special live stream today. Um, I'm delighted to be joined here by the, uh, the three Gower brothers who uh, I'll let you introduce yourselves. Hello, I'm Paul Gower. Um, I'm Andrew Gower. And I'm Ian. Hi, and what we thought would be probably really useful for a lot of people in the chat is to actually kind of go through what you guys contributed, especially to the early days of RuneScape. So, so, so start with yourself, Paul. Um, I was originally the entire content team when we <laughs> first started making the game, so all the original quests um, were done by me. Um, I also did all the original um, building of the original map, which now is part of the graphics team's remit, but um, so all the layout of Mithalin and Asgarnia, all the, the jobs of many were yeah. built by me. Um, there was a <laughs> lot of different things which I did. Um, Leaned a lot on you for a lot of the content as yeah. we were getting started. Did worked on some, some of the early skills and things like that as well. So well. Lifted out. Andrew, uh, what was your particular role in what yeah, we were doing? So I was basically the entire game engine team. <laughs> um, I was doing all of the coding in Java, every bit of Java code I wrote. So the, the server, the client, the map editor, the 3D modeling software, the 3D animation software, the web server, running all the servers, doing all the sysadmin, all of the technical stuff. Behind um, the scenes and so foundation. Behind the scenes. I also did a lot of design in terms of, I never did any quest. That's something a lot of people don't realize. I never wrote a single quest, but I did do quite a lot of the skills. I think I did the fishing skill um, and the various other skills. Um, um, didn't do much mapping. Um, did some of the graphics, not many. <laughs> um, Ian did quite a few graphics. Um, yeah, yeah, but mostly the technical stuff, mostly my remit. What, what I really enjoyed doing was making the engine, making the system that made the game work. And yeah. The sort of the core sort of. Everything that everything else was kind of built off the top of. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And Ian, how did you? Uh, how are you? Um, yeah, so I came in at the start as well uh, doing graphics work. Uh, that included um, 2D graphics work for, for monsters and players, which were, of course, 2D in the original game, the original RuneScape logo, uh, quite a lot of 3D modeling as well. Uh, later on, I moved into a content role, but initially at the start, it was all the 3D, 2D work. We've got the, uh, our standard teams of content, tech, and graphics <laughs> sitting on the couch. This is kind of the original spawn point. <laughs> it's worth mentioning also, Ian did the original RuneScape logo and the original Jugex logo. Nice. So um, I suppose I'll jump straight into it because we have a lot of questions have come through. And remember, if there's anything that you want to ask, throw it into the chat and we'll, uh, we'll try and jump to that as well. Um, we have a bunch of people trying to pick out the best things and we'll keep an eye out for them. But I've got one here. This is a difficult one. Uh, what, uh, what inspired the, f the original three gods? So that's, uh, that's Saradom and Zamorak and Gothics. I mean, I, when we first made the game, I made a church with a quest um, with a <laughs> priest in it. And then I thought I'd need to come up with some idea of some sorts of gods to go in the game. And I think it was partially sort of, well, there are three brothers, so we'll yeah. make three gods, which could potentially represent us. Um, they don't really, Do but... Ah, oh, damn it. I was going to push you to say who's who. <laughs> um, they're, they're, they're always used I'm Guthics. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, you see, I thought for a while there was a joke going around that I was Guthics on the basis Guthics was sleeping and most of us at university and wasn't actually particularly apparent. Okay, you can be Guthics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that leaves me a sound down then. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Everybody just came to a consensus. I'll go with that. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> We're not <laughs> arguing like the gods should do, but yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll smite you later. Uh, I have one. I, think not. I have a question here from Alaska Noob. Uh, what addition to the game gave you the most satisfaction to create and release? We'll go one by one. It's quite difficult because lots of things gave me good satisfaction. Yeah. But I'm going to go for Witcher of the Majorat just yeah. because that was the biggest. Which I still a big uh, thing today. Work personally on, and it was yeah a big, big long quest, and it had some new style of doing cutscenes at the time. I mean, there's lots of cutscenes like that at the moment, um, which was done in the new cutscene editor, which makes it a lot more yeah. snazzy and flashy. And <laughs> yeah. it was culminating a lot of different storylines, which I've been working on for a long time as well. So I was very excited to do that. So yeah. I'll go for that. I think for me, from a content point of view, uh, it'd have to be player and houses was one of the most anticipated updates we'd ever did um, and people have been asking it for years and years and we just couldn't do it originally we didn't have the technology and I had to make so many changes to the engine to support being able to construct bits of map yeah. out of pieces and you know we put so much work into it and the content team did some really good work on it and everyone was so excited for it um, it was one of the biggest updates we ever did um, there was a stealth launch as well wasn't there 
I do. Yes. Yeah. We, we d yeah, we did. We told. Yeah. We didn't put in the behind the scenes, did we? I'm pretty sure we didn't. It just we, we mentioned the skill, but we didn't mention Pound Houses, I think. Yeah. Something like that. I think we um, did something sneaky, yeah. yeah. We sort of hinted at it. Yeah. Um, um, and I think some people sort of guessed. Um, obviously, if I, you know, I'm, I know you asked for one thing, but the other thing was obviously the RuneScape 2 engine launch itself. Yeah. And again, that, that was because, from my point of view, that was a real opportunity to go and fix loads of things that I didn't like about the way the engine was written, about the game. It was just a sort of chance to sort of start again and fix everything that I'd felt, sort of felt I'd not got quite right with RuneScape Classics. It was really nice to. Oh, to I'd add that one that. to my list as well. Well, just being able to do a runescape Just be able to fix everything that, yeah. was, that, was, that, that didn't feel was right with the game and get it all right and get it all the way we wanted. That to was do. a lot of work for Both everybody. Both technically and content-wise. Yeah. It was a huge, massive job, but it was very, very satisfying to, to pull it off. Yes, well, that was going to be one of my answers to RuneScape <laughs> 2, obviously. Uh, we you got re back up. We, we essentially rewrote the entire game from the ground up, so that, that's a huge update. Um, <laughs> yeah, only, only a small little bit. <laughs> Um, but then some of the smaller updates, I think, uh, are also really good. One thing I particularly liked, uh, there, there was a project I'd sort of been working on sort of in between other projects, and we had a gap in the release schedule. Um, and it's like, oh, no, we don't have anything to launch this week. So I was like, hey, I've got this thing. We can release this. And that was um, changes to a whole load of interfaces in the game such that you could actually do the whole make X thing rather than having <laughs> to go through and going, I want to smelt an iron bar. I want to smelt an iron bar. You could actually go, I just want to smelt my entire inventory. Um, and that actually went down really well, given it was just a sort of like, quick, we need something to put in the game. It's, it's funny how like some of the smaller mm, little it things. Was, yeah, yeah, it happened a few times yeah. where we were trying to do a filler update because we didn't have anything for that week. Yeah, and and it was more popular than things we spent, <laughs> you know, months preparing. So and suddenly, <laughs> and then you end up in a place where players can't live without it. I, they're always a great one to go with. Um, okay, this this one actually grates me as well. I need to know this. Uh, I have. Iblife here asking, wh why do we only have 28 inventory spaces? <laughs> now that is a, I an interesting question because it's entirely due to what I could fit on the screen. In the actual <laughs> original, in the original RuneScape Classic, the inventory is actually bigger. It's 30. I, it's 30. I think it's 30, yeah. yeah. Um, and in RuneScape 2, I really wanted to fit the inventory permanently on, the, or well, you know, the, the bottom right section permanently on the screen. I wanted the 3D bit to be the same size as it was in RuneScape Classic. And the, the total size of the screen was determined by the common sort of screen resolutions and amount of sort of browser toolbar that was common at the time, because that was predetermined amount of space. And that was basically all the space I had. I couldn't fit more than 28 in. Um, and I made up for it by making it so when you wore items, they didn't take up space in your inventory anymore, because in RuneScape Classic, they still took up an inventory slot. Yeah, you um, didn't have a separate inventory it didn't screen. Have a separate, it didn't have a separate inventory and equip screen. And I couldn't fit more than 28 in. I was like, people are going to be really unhappy about losing their inventory slots. I was like, well, I'll make it so you can wear some of the stuff. And, oh, it sort of cancels it out. Well, it doesn't cancel it out. You've got more spaces. Well, you have. You do. It depends what you're doing. If you're doing something like mining, where you don't really mm. need a lot of equipment, not yeah, If you want to not fit not 30 so ore in your inventory, then you yeah, can't exactly. fit 30 ore in your inventory anymore. Exactly. But you can put but your pickaxe in your hand. You so, yeah. so you've only lost one. You've only lost one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that. Um, all right. So if you could go back in time to when RuneScape Classic was first being designed and developed, what would you change um, differently, assuming you knew the success that we've had over the past 15 years? I think I would slightly like to rearrange the way some of the skills progress. Um, we didn't realise it was going to be a game which people spent so many hours playing, so some of the yeah. ends of the skills are a little bit funny. We'd have probably made it as well so that um, smithing, you were could be making something relevant to your level as you yeah, level up and things like that, which yeah. is <laughs> quite hard to change retrospectively. Shameless <laughs> plug. <laughs> oh, totally going to try and do that in 2016. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's only been 15 years in the making, but we'll finally get around to that we'll one. We're finally getting around to that one. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of the skills were just a bit thrown yeah. together. or We sort of expected people to get up to about <coughs> level 70 and then they'd have burnt out. So we made them so they... <laughs> yeah, no, they just <laughs> keep going. So they just kept going. Yeah. Um, and from my point of view, I mean, a lot of the stuff we already fixed when we did RuneScape 2 yeah. and in the subsequent, a huge amount of things that I was able to fix. It was the things that were so deeply ingrained into the game that you couldn't really change them. And the thing that I never felt I never sort of nailed, and I think I could do a much better job of it now, was the sort of early game experience. In particular, I sort of always felt it was a bit of a shame that the game sort of tried to teach you ton and tons and tons of concepts in like a 30 minute tutorial, and then it just dropped you in it. And if I was doing it, and it's not something you can sort of retrofit very easily, but if I was doing it from scratch, I'd make the game unlock much more gradually. Over, you know, you'd start off with only a few skills, and then you'd do a quest, and you'd get another skill, and then you'd... I mean, obviously we did that with the subsequent skills, but I would, I would start you with a lot less stuff, 
and make the game sort of expand out over the course of maybe sort of 20, 30 hours. So you got a real nice feeling of progression at the start of the game. And you weren't just dumped in right at the deep end with tons and tons and tons of stuff to do. You yeah. could probably lay out the map a little and bit And I'd lay better. out the map very differently. And, and make it also try and introduce the story earlier, try and get some of these big, long story arcs that are quite key to the game. Try and introduce little seas yeah. and hint at those earlier on as well. It's yeah. very difficult to retrofit but those things. It's a lot to retrofit, retrofit. But you, obviously the question is, what would you change if you could go back yeah. in time? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's really not talking about what you can retrofit. Uh, most so anything you can game. retrofit, we did retrofit. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean. Anything you want to change? Um, I mean, one thing we did discuss at one point was sometimes because the XP is given at the end of a sequence of actions, some of the skills become quite viable. So, for example, one person does all the flax picking, doesn't get any XP for it, sells it all, one person buys all the flax and does the stringing, and then gets XP extra quick. So we did sort of discuss, is there any way we could rebalance this such that the XP is sort of given throughout, but it's like, n no, not now, the game's already there. Yeah. From the start, it's something you might have done, but it's not something... A lot of it got exacerbated by the Grand Exchange, which made it an awful lot easier to just... Yeah. Buy the things, Certainly find the person selling the thing that you needed. So there's quite a lot of things I would have designed differently with the knowledge of the gun exchange being there. A lot of yeah, the game was designed around the concept that trading wasn't that easy. So you know, there's quite a lot of things that, with the benefit of hindsight, <laughs> I would build a different way. It is a case that these days, when, as soon as you know the grand exchange is there, it just changes the way you play entirely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So if there's something which you can just do quicker by buying it off the grand exchange, which is why I like Iron Code. Well. Um, yes. yes. Because it, a lot of the content that got a bit broken by, by the grand exchange. Uh, is still available if you play it in Iron Man mode. Yeah. So it's almost like a different game. It's quite nice, actually. Oh, it's a very different game. Yeah. I'm not good enough. <laughs> um, okay, so Iron Jin is asking, what was your first 99 and your favorite skill? And I'm going to stick on to that. What's your favorite skill to play, and what was your favorite skill to build? My first 99 was actually uh, Dungeoneering, um, strangely enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tricky one. <laughs> Largely because my wife was getting home hey. <laughs> 99 Dungeoneering, and yeah. I did it with her. Um, my favourite skill to build, I, I enjoyed building Herblore, because yeah. there was, and probably I'd say it's my favourite one to play if you've played in Iron Man mode, um, <laughs> because um, it's just got all sorts of little um, ways you have to try and get all the different ingredients. And, you need um, to know the plants, you need to know where you're going. All the secondary ingredients, yeah. a lot of different ways. So you can actually... Um, because you get all different random herbs as well, you want to make use of all your herbs. If you're playing it how it was originally intended, then you do have to do all sorts of different bits of gameplay to get the secondaries, and it makes for fairly, fairly varied sort of gameplay. So, yeah. Um, I like Herblo. <laughs> ah, more. Are you 99 Herblo? I'm not 99 Herblo. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favourite skill to play, definitely engineering. I just like the fact that it utilises all the other skills in the game and you get to do a little bit of everything. I was never one for sort of yeah. playing sort of super efficiently. I know, I know it's very in fashion to sort of, yeah. you know, no, no XP waste and all that, yeah. but I was never like that. I was always like, I had a bit of this skill and a bit of that skill. So I loved engineering because it let me sort of mix and match and get all sorts of different aspects of gameplay in. In terms of skills to make, I mean, I made all sort of really early ones and combat probably, you know, the sort <laughs> just of raw <laughs> combat. Uh, you know, just, you know, the melee, uh, yeah. you, know, you know, I enjoyed doing the original combat system and, and making all that work. Having fun with it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, again, my favourite skill to actually play is um, going to be dungeoneering just because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it gets you doing all those different activities. Although to be honest, I don't do a huge amount of dungeoneering because I've, I've always played um, RuneScape as a sort of on the side sort of game, so I'll do it whilst I'm doing something else. Yeah. So in that regard, my highest skill was the things like woodcutting because it's kind of like, well, I can click a tree and then I can sort of uh, go and work yeah. on doing else a bit and then come back and click a tree and <laughs> finish. I know the feeling. I did quite a lot of that, yeah. um, in terms of developing, I mean, the, you know, there's only really one answer for that for me because the skill I sort of developed right from the very beginning myself was the hunter skill. Um, and it was also quite fun to develop because we tried to make it a bit more varied than the, the existing skills rather than just sort of click on location and then leave it. Now, I know that means a lot of play people really don't like the hunter skill <laughs> because you can't just click it and leave it, but from a sort of design coding point of view, uh, that was quite fun to get my teeth into. Yeah, injecting that variety means, you know, it's a little bit more interesting when you try to build it. Um, we've got a Mr. Daniel who has gotten a question from Twitch, and he says, where did you get all of the ideas for for making this game? Uh, you must have a massive imagination. 
all the ideas. I mean, we get them from all over the yeah. place. <laughs> <laughs> so as many sources as possible, to be honest. A lot of them come from in my head, I like to think. <laughs> but um, they may have had influences from all sorts of games I've played or what TV programs. Find where you're like, what did you find were your influences at the very early days? I mean, it was definitely it was definitely computer games and board games. Yeah. And then sort of took a little bit uh, of all, you know, tons and tons of games. I you know, I thought, you know, that you know, I for example, Secret Monkey Island, I liked yeah. point and click yeah. graphical adventures. That was quite inspirational in terms of how, how we use on the quest. Do yeah. How we did the quest. The, the quests are the quests very, very heavy. The whole yeah. way the interface worked was quite sort of, you know, the fact that it's a point and click MMO as opposed to a WASD MMO is because I liked point and click. Yeah. Um, you know, adventure games. Um, you know, and RPGs, things like Dungeon Master was a big inspiration. Dungeons and Dragons, the actual board game. Um, loads of board games. You'd be surprised how many of the mechanics of the game are actually based on board game mechanics. Because board games are quite varied. There's a lot, there's a lot to draw from there. Because certainly at, at the time, computer games were quite, there was quite same. A lot of them were just sort of first person shooters. Mm -hmm. There was less to draw from in the world of computer games. Um, and in, but board games because they were cheaper to make. Yeah. So, um, there was so much, so many different mechanics that you could sort of. Well, we'll see in the clip later on yeah. where you do have an impressive collection of board games, so uh, lots to draw from. Um, and actually, you almost perfectly segued into another question. Whereas, uh, and I've lost it. It was right in front of me. Someone's moved something. <laughs> We've perfectly uh, segued into a question which is gone. <laughs> it's gone. That's why people people are moving all of my things. Um, did you guys ever plan? For RuneScape to kind of evolve into a WASD movement system? No. <laughs> no I did perfectly segue into that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I always envisaged it being a point and click adventure. I was trying to make a point and click adventure. The game engine was not designed with WASD in mind. We did actually experiment with it. I remember this. Because people were asking for it, but the, the whole way the thing worked, it wasn't designed as an action engine, it was designed as just sort of slow, more slowly paced slightly more casual point and click engine. The, 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 the speed that the server's clocked at it only is quite slow and it just doesn't work for that sort of real time interaction mm. and it wasn't designed to. We you remember the experiments? We, we, we even we got quite a long way. With some, we've had multiple attempts at experimenting yeah. with WASD. Um, and one thing we found was o o because all the blocking is grid based, you might have a pair of trees, and if you're moving with WSD, you try and walk your character between them, and you're just hitting this invisible blocking, and it's so annoying. If you click on the other side, your character just automatically finds its own route. It was really um, interesting watching people do that. Like, you'd click somewhere, and mm. you, you never notice the pathing and the way it's taking, like, this route, this zigzag route through different yeah. blocking, and suddenly when you have to walk, you're like, oh, what is going on? That was really interesting. So, so to make it playable, you'd have to remap huge <laughs> chunks of the world as well, just to make, and then actual have, have proper collision detection between the player and the loca locations, it would just be a nightmare. But also, <laughs> I just don't think WSD made it a better game. Mm. Uh, one of the things no. I like about RuneScape is it's not the same as all the other MMOs out there. A lot of the other MMOs are more action-y, they've got WSD controls. RuneScape is more of a graphical adventure MMO, and I like the fact that it's, it's different and it's, and it's unique. Yeah, you can choose to like engage a little bit, let it do a bit of its own thing, yeah, come exactly. back, make yeah. sure everything's working yeah. okay. Yeah. Also, I'm still mainly hopeful that someday we'll get a tablet version out because it works really well for tablet, that sort of, you know, actually tap where you're going as opposed to trying to have some weird on-screen joystick yeah. which yeah, doesn't no, you don't need work that. at all. They don't work very well. Okay. Um, and to a question that doesn't segue at all, <laughs> what was the most stressful thing you experienced behind the scenes? And there's various things which I find stressful. I find it stressful when things just didn't go down very well with players because I'm mm. sitting there wanting a lot of what I'm doing is trying to entertain people and when people don't like it, it yeah it stressed me if we release bugs sometimes they were very stressful as well because you're running around very quickly to try and fix them before they what is the worst encounter you had with something going wrong and having to I suppose firefight one of those bugs definitely the item duping bug because oh, they yeah. had they could do so much damage the economy of the game so quickly yeah and they were very hard to roll back we had a horrible one straight after we launched player and houses where you could you could dupe items in some way um and we fixed it very 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 quickly i mean we were panicking yeah. but luckily you know it got fixed within a matter of minutes and we you know we, it didn't do particularly large amount of damage but but they're, they're definitely the worst because they were the hardest they had the most lasting consequence you know, a bug that meant you couldn't complete the quest didn't really matter. Yeah. You fixed it and then you could complete the quest. Yeah, yeah. people were just um, a bit annoyed for like a quarter of an hour while we fixed yeah. it, but yeah. it didn't really matter in the end. When no. it's every moment that this thing is live, it's causing more and more damage, that's always a stressful yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's horrible. And just sort of 
sitting there trying to figure out what actually happened. And sometimes we had to um, just disable things just so that we could yeah, figure out what was going on before we could be able to <laughs> shut it down. <laughs> I think the thing I found most stressful was, again, from a game engine perspective, was just keeping the servers online and running. I, we were developing the game so fast and adding features to it every single week, and I was always desperately worried I was going to introduce some horribly critical bug that was going to take the servers offline or that we wouldn't have enough capacity to cope because the players were going up so fast, and I was continually trying to... Up, you know, the, the number of players was far higher than we originally anticipated. And the servers couldn't actually handle that many yeah. players, and I was, I was sort of trying to re-architect the system on the fly to sort of be able to handle more servers and the servers cross-communicating, and, and just trying to keep the whole thing online and working yeah. was, was pretty stressful. When we launched like Scania, which is a big anticipated update, everyone tried to play it at once, and then everyone was frustrated because they couldn't play the update because suddenly the servers couldn't handle it, and Andrew had to... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> make some efficiency it. changes to actually let people <laughs> play it again. Yeah. <laughs> Anything really uh, stressing you out? I think one of the things I, I kind of found stressful uh, um, was when we had to introduce the uh, free trade restrictions because that wasn't actually an update mm. we wanted to do. No, we were no. forced into it and we could see that it was damaging yeah. to the gameplay and I found that tough thing, to be honest at the time. <laughs> Making those tough decisions is... Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. Doing something you know isn't going to be popular, but you feel you have no choice. Not so nice. To, uh, to slightly change the question, I should finish reading them. I actually have a list of possible options of which you find more stressful. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you've kind of covered some of them. We have securing funding to start the game, meeting user expectations, expanding existing content, or completing content on time. Securing funding... I mean, very, very early on, when we, you know, we hadn't even launched members, I was cons worried, to say the least, that, that I wasn't going to have to shut the game down because running the servers was basically eating in, into the, the, the small amount of money I had, you know, managed to save as a student. Yeah. Um, um, but beyond, but that wasn't really very long, and as soon as we launched members, we never had a trouble, trouble with that. Um, uh, what was the other ones? Meeting user expectations? That was always that stressful. That was always stressful. Because yeah. Every time we did an update, we would always rush to the game or rush to the forums to see what people thought of it. And yeah. Obviously, some things people didn't like, and it was always very upsetting that's when we spent months working on it. But that's still inevitable. tough. Nobody's yeah. ever getting away from that, really. Yeah. Uh, expanding existing content. That's the fun bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was stressful. <laughs> Keep uh, completing content on time, filling that weekly release schedule. Sometimes that was stressful if you were not yeah. managing to hit your targets. If, it, if you were hitting it, then it was fine, but sometimes... Depends how long the backlog was. So yeah. sometimes, <laughs> sometimes the backlog got right down to the wire and there was no backlog mm. left. Sometimes we had like the next four weeks covered. Yeah. Um, and sometimes we sort of did promise something at a specific time and then found that we couldn't deliver it. And then yeah. obviously you've got players sitting saying that you break your promise, you said that you couldn't do that. And it's like... We're going as quick as we can, and <laughs> feeling stressed. We can't do it. <laughs> it is. It is tough to keep. There were top. times when I was very stressed about not. <laughs> yeah. Managing to do that. Um, okay, so let's just let we've gone over the the terrible terrible times. So let's focus on what year or time period of RuneScape was your best time being on it. I think it was probably um just after we'd launched members, to be honest, because once we'd launched members, we'd got over the stress of whether we could actually afford to yeah. um, release the game on time. Um, I mean, sorry. Yeah, continue to run <laughs> the game. Continue, continue to run the game. Continue to run the game. Yeah. 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 And yeah. the game was growing in popularity very quickly, and yeah. it was also quite fun because I generally did enjoy the game working on it. When it's it was exciting times, right? Yeah, when it's small and just starting out. It Everything you did to the game made a big impact at that point because the game was quite small. Yeah. Um, I think my favourite time was just after the launch of Inkscape 2, because I just got the tech to the point where it actually worked, it actually scaled, <laughs> it could actually keep up with the number. Because prior to the, you know, a lot of members we were financially fine, but technologically, I was really struggling to keep up with the number of players. I was having trouble with my servers crashing, yeah. um, all sorts of problems. With Inkscape 2, it, it, the growth got even faster, but the technology was in, was in you know, I was expecting it at that yeah. point, and it was in place. And I'd say sort of 2004 to 2007, really golden era for me, really fast growth, you know, mass, yeah. you know, really big player base and everything actually working. Um, and still quite lots and lots of ideas of things we want to improve. Yeah, yeah, solid structural base. Yeah, I'd agree that period after the launch of RS2, sort of 2004 through 2007, um, it ended up 
about 2007, I think that was when I moved over to work on Stella Dawn. So <laughs> funnily enough, coming back to old school for me, it seemed very much like there hasn't yes. been a break. So Just <laughs> went away and came straight back. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that, that's probably my favourite sort of period. Maybe sort of like a year later with the HD update wouldn't be bad, but yeah, 2006, seven ish yeah. Um, so I suppose this is mainly a question for leaning on Paul. Uh, how do you feel about the current lore? Where it's at, what's changed, and uh, what would you have... Uh, that's a bit harsh, but what would you have changed and what we've done differently? Ooh. <laughs> now, some of it um, is actually sort of based on um, ideas which I gave before I left the company. I did actually write a little bit of a document about where I thought some storylines would be going. So it's... It's not contradicted anything which I, <laughs> uh, I, uh, I've said. Some of it has expanded in ways which I hadn't imagined. I probably wouldn't have actually killed off Guthix. So <laughs> I'd quite like to have Guthix, and it just sort of seems strange that people could sort of say that they were <laughs> fans of Guthix, and now Guthix is no more. So, um, he's, still, he's still with us. He's, he's still, still with us. us. He's still with us in spirit. Or he's got his own holiday. <laughs> but, yeah, so... Um, um, that, I mean, there's all sorts of different things which I probably would have done a little bit differently, but um, I quite like a lot of the lore that has. <laughs> How do you find going from a place where you're helping construct that lore to a place where it becomes a surprise, like you don't expect things to happen? Ooh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes you initially say that's not how I was expecting <laughs> it to happen. Uh, what are they doing? But then um, it's quite interesting to <laughs> play it and see how things are going. Um, yeah. Okay. It's Actually, um, and that kind of, I've only a, a small set of questions, more for us to come back to, but um, what we're going to do is start moving on to uh, Maud Campbell here, who's going to join us on the couch. How's it going? Hey. Hello. Huh? Hello. How's it going? You right, guys? So Maud Campbell is the, um, the editor and the everything for our new documentary coming out about the 15 years of RuneScape. I'll let you introduce it. Yeah, so we've got uh, the RuneScape documentary is, uh, well, I don't, I don't want to ruin, I don't want to answer your questions for you. I'll but tell yeah. you what, I will alter what I've got here based yeah. on what you say. Okay. Like, like prose. Brilliant. So we've been working on the uh, RuneScape documentary now for the last six months or so. I say it's even longer than that. Really. It you feels like it's been you about... You first emailed me in April last year. April. Right? Okay. No, it's, it's, we didn't start filming this yet. Yeah, it's starting to come a bit of a blur now. It but, was about um, six months ago that... You did the interview really, with yeah, me, I think. Yeah. So. so yeah, we've obviously uh, we're looking back over the whole of the last fifteen years, sort of looking at where the games come from, um, all the way back to uh, these guys as kids. There are some uh, lovely and <laughs> somewhat embarrassing <laughs> childhood photos in there, um, and we're really looking at. Oh yeah, of course. Not, yeah, not only course. in the next You'll half get an to hour. See some of those clip, those uh, lovely photos as well. I tell so, you what, um, that's a great time. Should we roll the first clip? Why not? I think we should roll the first clip. That sounds like a brilliant <laughs> idea. I grew up in Nottingham uh, with my family and my brothers, Paul and Ian. No idea. Um, and we were always very much a gaming family. Uh, played lots of board games and, and computer games growing up. Played a lot of Dungeon Dragons with my brothers and, and my dad. And he, you know, he was always a dungeon master and we were always exploring the dungeon. Uh, and I think that gave a lot of sort of inspiration for a lot of the computer the games I did, particularly my love of sort of role playing games and things like that. They got lots of imagination. They were always playing imaginary games, acting out things. There was a very early fantasy game I played probably when I was about five, but that was an early fantasy game called Sorcerer's Cave, which is a game where you lay out big tiles um, on the floor and you basically get to explore a dungeon as a character and probably give me a little bit of influence on what I do even then, you know. <laughs> can we oh, back? Well, that was surprising. Oh, yeah. I that wasn't was ready for that for to you, wasn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, yes. There you go, that, that caught you on a way. I'll tell it? you what, uh, so I'm going to move this on to you. Uh, um, why do a documentary on RuneScape? I think it's something that people have uh, wanted to see for a long time. You, you always hear these little stories about, oh, I heard, the, um, I heard this funny little story about how this thing came into the game, or, you know, the sound of bacon in a kitchen, and uh, all these kind of little funny stories. But I don't think we've ever really put them in one place. Obviously, some people have a really good knowledge of the game history, where it came from, whereas other people came in a lot later. And it was, we thought with, with reaching 15 years, it's sort of such a milestone that, you know, it was a good point to celebrate where we're at now, look to where we're going, and just really sum everything up. Um, and 
how long had we been planning this? I mean, our first emails kind of went out in April of last yeah. year. We were talking about this a little bit earlier than that. We were, yeah. So sort of beginning of last year, probably about February time or so, I guess we, we had a first couple of meetings about it. Uh, me, uh, Mod D, Mod Mac, a few others sat down, or Mod Mark, of course, sat down, and we started talking about the idea of making a, a RuneScape documentary and uh, how much work it would be, whether it was something we could actually handle internally. or whether Totally jumping on that. Yeah. Were you ready for how much work there was actually going to be? Um, it has become my life. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't realise, I mean, at the moment we've shot over 40 hours of footage. So, um, so there's, there's quite a lot to cut through. But yeah, my Christmas was spent literally like Christmas Day. I took my machine from upstairs home. I took my monitor home, took all that back and was... Literally Christmas Day, then next day it was right, right, let's get back to editing again. And I thought it would be a bit more peaceful taking it home. But actually all it meant was I'd be sat there watching TV and I'd like look across the room and be like, ah, there's a lot to do on that documentary still. I should probably go and uh, do some more editing. But uh, it has been a lot of work, but it, it's coming together now where uh, the end is almost in sight, I hope. How many people have been involved so far? Um, well, how many people have we interviewed? And, uh, well, all together. Let's, okay. Oh. How many people have you interviewed? How many people are involved behind the scenes? And I've, I have another question about someone specific. Uh, yeah, I think I might know who that is. So I think we, we've interviewed about 40 people, maybe maybe more. There's a lot of, there, there are a lot of people in there. Obviously, uh, you guys are three of our main interviewees in there. Mod Mark takes up a big, a big part as well, and a lot of other people, former staff, players. Um, behind the scenes, there's, there's a lot of people doing little things. A lot of the work really has been myself, Mod D, Mod Lord has been doing all the audio work. Um, then we've got a couple of other people doing graphics and that kind of stuff. But it has been quite a small team for the most part. And um, of course, there's lots of. It's a tight knit group of very panicked people when we walk into that fishbowl. It's very panicked when one of the people who's uh, majorly working on, on it with you has gone to Thailand for three weeks. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Mod D. <laughs> um, and I've got a very, very specific question. Did you get to shake hands with Zesma? Oh. That's, we haven't spoken about it yet. Okay, but, um, that's fine. No, no, no. So, we um, can speak about it. Oh, really? We can. This is kind of uh, the first time we're saying. And exclusive. Exclusive. Exclusive moment. We have actually got Zezima. Oh, wait a minute. I'm being, I'm being waited. Wait a minute. Should I, should I look down the lens for this one? <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic moment. We have Zezima in the documentary. And he trolled me when I was arranging going to meet him. Brilliant. I got an email, so we were trying to sort out going to interview him and where and when. We obviously, we went over to America to shoot this interview a month or so, a couple of months ago. And woke up one morning to an email that said, um, yeah, you can come around and interview me uh, from like 11.30. Just got to pop out and buy some bananas. And I was like, even Zezima is taking the about yeah. bananas. You did ask for it, though. I, I did. Mean, I you did. invited So there that. you go. But yeah, Zezima is in there. So considering the number of small little stories you're jumping onto as you're talking about this, are you going to do a documentary about making the documentary about RuneScape? I thought we might do a director's commentary. <laughs> like, I thought oh we my could, God, <laughs> you should definitely should, do a director's commentary. Because be we great. have got some terrible stories. Of oh, geez. Cars breaking down in Amsterdam and all that kind of <laughs> fun stuff. No, genuinely, I think we can make another movie. Yeah, it's, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, I suppose <laughs> this probably should have been the first question I asked. What's the documentary called? So this, again, is something that in no way was decided today <laughs> <laughs> via a I'm very rushed email chain. I'm glad we've had this decided for months on end. We have known for a long time what this was called. Uh, it's called RuneScape 15 Years of Adventure. 15 Years of Adventure. <laughs> Do you want to say it again? <laughs> I, I went blah, 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 blah. So I thought I should emphasize it. I think that's what it was called. That was what we called it, wasn't it, Connor? Yes, that yes is it right. was. That is, yeah. that is correct. RuneScape, 15 years of adventure. So, I suppose, everyone else, what do you guys think about there being a documentary about something? Did you ever think something like this would happen? No, I mean, we sort of, we toyed with the idea of could we do a RuneScape <coughs> movie, but a documentary was not something we even... Well, our aware. special effects budget didn't stretch we to didn't. doing a movie, so, I you know, documentary... I explosions in there if... Uh, Ray! I'll try and get a couple <laughs> in there at some point. I mean, it's a lot of fun to do, except for the random photographs of when we're young. Not <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if we'd known there was a documentary, we would have tried to get some more flashing photos when we were kids. <laughs> yeah, we're planning for this <laughs> in a number of years. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> lots of planning. Um, so, I don't know if you know this. When, when can we expect to see it? So this, again, is one of those questions where Bang. I was like, 
I should probably get an idea for this before I come on here. And we're going with that very tentative announcement of spring. <laughs> spring. <laughs> I'm surprised. Spring. I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Let's say, uh, yeah, I'm going to put that out of there. This spring. Oh, ooh. Ooh, I know. That's more <laughs> specific than we've had on this couch before. I was expecting a good old soon. Yeah. Oh, it almost was soon. It almost was. was. Oh, if bro. you don't put it out for too long, then it becomes the 16 year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can hold back on Yeah, that. you've only got a small window, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you what, we've got a second snippet from the documentary. I think we should consider rolling that. And I was interviewing people while uh, myself and Constant were wandering in and out of the little office with them desks and computers and setting them up behind them, which was probably quite a distracting way to have one's interview. And I remember the night before, sort of frantically Googling, sort of like, how do you interview someone? What did you ask at an interview? What are you, what are you supposed to do? My interview was, was awesome because it was just a room and there was just a table with a laptop on it and Andrew, and that, that, that was it. And I thought, well, you know, what have I sort of stepped into? Um, and he, he said, can you type something? And I remember Andrew kind of looking at, watching me type. And, and then uh, it was like, great, all right. And then, what advice would you have for any budding game developer trying to develop a game for browsers? Okay, well, I think the first thing I'd say is don't try and do everything yourself. Uh, find a really good game engine that, that can do a lot of the sort of groundwork for you. Um, uh, the second thing I would say is things like Java and Flash, I think, are on the way out. They're sort of, you know, last year's technologies uh, going forward. It all looks like the browser game's all going towards WebGL and asm.js. They're, they're the two things to Google. Uh, <laughs> if you go to the Wikipedia page for asm.js, it lists... Can you, can you just spell that for anybody who's... Uh, so asm.js. Perfect. Um, so yeah, go to the Wikipedia, pa Wikipedia page for that. That's the technology I would use if I was making a browser. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, and we'll go to something that's not as practical. Who came up with Braska Prime? Um, you, and that was me. Uh, that was originally when we were making a... April Fool's uh, news post, which oh. we came up with um, um, the idea for Brassica Prime because we made a um, news post of a fake behind the scenes um, <laughs> um, for a month of April, uh, which everything was themed about cabbages. And um, I just needed a boss for the end of my cabbage dungeon. So um, <laughs> the biggest cabbage name I could think of was Brassica Prime. Prime. Nice. And is that the origin behind all of the cabbage stuff? Or is there a different origin? No, it was earlier than that. It was earlier than that. Cabbages were... Uh, it, the original game, the original launch, had fields of cabbages in that you could eat. And one of the first quests is witch's potion. You had to put the oh, wrong yeah. cabbage into the witch's potion. So, so why cabbages? I think I think it's just because because it was in the game from the very very start. It was one of the sort of first sort of comedy elements we, we sort of added because it was so early on. There was a sort of desire to sort of keep it as a running joke. Cabbages are somehow a humorous vegetable. I don't know why, but they make us laugh. <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, were there any story or quest ideas that you had that never managed to make it in game? Um, there was there were some quests which um, one of the very, very new developers um, made, which were not very good. They were very bland. So they actually kind of instead of just scrapping them entirely, um, we um, we used all the. I suppose assets. to clarify, rather than saying that any of our current new developers making bland quests, this was someone had made a bland quest that had been released that we. It was, a new, it was a new developer yeah. at the time. They don't work at Netflix <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Before we start attacking our line of quests. No. Uh. Yes, it, there, there were some quests. They, he, he, this guy um, whipped out four quests very, very quickly. Um, um, we thought he'd made them quite quick, but they turned out to not to really have a lot um. to them at all. There wasn't really any storyline to them or anything. So what we had to do in the end, uh, we gave the, all the assets, all the dungeons which had been made... Um, for these quests to mod James, and then he sort of consumed them all and made them into <laughs> one quest. Um, what quest uh, was that? Desert, Desert Treasure. treasure. Hey. So basically, there are four quests, the four different um, diamonds which you have to collect in Desert Treasure. Each one takes part in a different dungeon from one of each of these four um, rubbish quests. <laughs> <laughs> Compressing four quests into one. Nice work. Um, he did a good job of that. It felt quite cohesive considering it's made out of four quests. Mm -hmm. um, and nobody knows. Well, they do now. Uh, okay, this is, I think this is a good couch for it. What do you think about RuneScape actually being in two communities, really? The old school community and the, like, the RuneScape 3 community? I mean, I'm, I'm chuffed a bit, to be honest with you. Yeah? Because uh, um, for me, old school RuneScape is kind of my legacy. That's, that's kind of the RuneScape 
I made. I, I mean, I did a little bit more on it after that, but not much. And it, it's very much how I envisaged it being. Um, so it's, it's nice for me personally that you know the RuneScape that I that you know that I envisaged that, that I worked on is still available. And you can still play it, and it's still there. And it, 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 you know, um, it, I think it gives the best of both worlds. You can, you can play the RuneScape that I liked, and but there's also the opportunity to sort of you know to play the new one with all the new new improvements. I mean, when uh, Mark actually he actually said to me before we launched, he said that you know we found this old backup when we're thinking about launching old school RuneScape, and I was like, do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I find it quite flattering. I mean, the cutoff point is round about when I sort of stepped back from being sort of um, the lead yeah. designer, basically, and um, I was getting a little bit sort of stressed by various things, yeah. partially because we're having to do the removal of um, the wilderness and stuff. Yeah. Um, so I thought I just want to go back to um, making quests. It was things. definitely so a tough time around then. So up to that point, it's kind of um, the runescape yeah. content where I was <laughs> in charge of it, um, pretty oh. much. So. And yeah, again, I've said that's about the time yeah. I moved over to Stella Dawn, so old school seems very familiar to me. But I also quite like, now Now that it's split in two, it gives each game the opportunity to sort of develop in, in its yeah. own way. I mean, it, it probably has allowed RS3 to sort of be bolder with its updates, with some of the bigger storylines, yeah. um, which you might not have done if you were concerned about... We can cater, like, like you said, you know, you're unsure about like the death of Gothics. So we can take that storyline and go in that direction. And, but if you're looking for that nostalgia and that, like, you know, <laughs> the game as you envisaged it, you still have old yeah. school for that. So, like, they're catering to different yeah. groups. I mean, it's nice to have a new game which can try and keep up a little bit with modern technologies and um, yeah. not look quite so um, dated for newer <laughs> players who are <laughs> looking for a browser game. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I don't know if this was just added. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So the game has a lot of behind the scenes, real life occurrences uh, for some of the updates, like the sandwich lady making its way through to random events. What were some funny quest-like features or under random, r other random things that came about this way? Stankers? Yeah, Stankers. There's, a few, there's a few people who are very approximate. Um, <laughs> Versions of people approximate. we know. Versions of people we knew. Um, you probably know, not actually people who worked at Jagex yeah. generally. There's a lot of characters. No names, all fictitious. Uh, any resemblance is purely coincidental. Exactly. And that out of the way. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of them are named after people who are my friends in real life. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the shopkeepers, especially, are oh. actually people who um, I went to university with or <laughs> <laughs> played Magic the Gathering with and things oh, like that. Well, um, just, just give the ideas of. Uh, is there more sounds? <laughs> any other? I think it's content that's not based in real life that people think are. Yeah. Example, Bob, we did not have a cat called Bob the Cat on the side no. of the team. Yeah. A lot of people think we did. Ah. Are you sure? You didn't just wipe your minds. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The Valak Museum is actually modelled after the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge, so it's got the same front to it. look familiar. Uh, <laughs> ah. So I have, um, following on from museums and all of the old content, oh, geez, this, this is fairly laboured, we do have the Gower Quest, and we have the designer who will be working on the Gower Quest about to join us. Um, so, do you care to join us and introduce yourself? Hi. I don't think I've been on one of these before. Yeah. Do, do I've, you I've care sat to I've sat on this couch, but no one could see me because we were doing a podcast. Uh, I'm not Jack. <laughs> uh, I'm a designer. It's, it's a bit unfair to call me the designer on Gower that, Quest. That is, yeah, that has, is true. It has quite a lot of developers and designers, including these three here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm sort of in charge of the design. You're... You're representing our development team who are working yeah. on We on couldn't the get more days in because he looks too much like Andrew and people were worried <laughs> that they wouldn't be able to tell the difference between it, it is a bit really? scary. Uh, uh, after, <laughs> after this, go up and have a, have a chat. It's when he, when he started, it was, uh, it was, he looks just like Andrew. And then That's when you cool. left and then now you're back, everyone's like, he looks just like Kev. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jack, you took your badge off. Oh. No, I've lost it somewhere. Oh, oh yes, it's on my it's on my hoodie, oh, which I took off because it's gone. boiling hot in here. Gone. It is quite warm in here. It said uh, "world's best seventy year old." Yes, and it is true. Happy birthday! So I thought we'd just kind of run through, and a, a good introduction is where did the idea for the quest come from, with absolutely no details about what the quest is. The idea, the, the, the idea of what happens in the quest, yeah. rather than why we're doing a gal, because we're doing a gal quest because it's awesome, we are doing right? a gal quest, yeah, and because it's the 15 year anniversary, and what else would we do? The, the themes, idea for the quest itself, I believe, came from you guys. We had a big meeting with yeah. Mod Osborne. Well, we first of all we emailed a few ideas across. Um, bizarrely, me and Paul had vaguely similar ideas, completely independently, yeah. um, <laughs> which was a bit strange. Um, and then we had a brainstorming meeting, yeah. didn't we? We all came down. Well, we came and fleshed out various ideas and through. 
various elements which we wanted in the quest into the pot and and it was I mean it something I think you'd intended it as a sort of list of of concepts but actually there was a fairly coherent quest yeah, concept exactly. in there. we had a list of sort of concepts that we wanted to yeah well we thought would be nice we didn't need them but we thought it'd be nice to get into the quest we didn't have any massive idea how they exactly fitted together but well, we had some ideas of the overall story as well which yeah. some of which we'd very came rough up with in our emails yeah, and stuff, which we had in the meeting. Like, you know, a couple of hours long, so we just got a very rough outline of, of, of how the quest was going to work. Yeah, got a got a good kind of like it's a backbone of the quest and some of the key the key beats. We'll flesh them out as we go along. Yeah. So with that in mind, um, do you want to share any teasers? Well, I'm uh, not going to tell you to or ask you. To yeah. So we can't can't tell you anything about what happens in the quest itself. But the st at the start of the quest, the Gower brothers are living on the Gower farm. So we're actually <laughs> turning up in the game, yeah, yeah. not as gods this so time. So there's going to be not as gods. There's going to be NPCs. Oh, someone asked me earlier, are they are they are they NPCs in the world? Are they them put into the world? To try and be ambiguous about it as much as possible. I think. I think that's a good call. But you guys are cabbage mancers living on a <laughs> living on a cabbage farm, and the yeah. tragedy is that the cabbages aren't growing in the cabbage patches. So we're coming back to this cabbage theme again. Yeah, I mean, well. well that brainstorm, it was almost it terrifying. Was, the amount it was just cabbage all cabbages all the time. Yeah, uh, yeah we I do wasn't like ready cabbages. for that. And uh, so this quest will feature cabbages very heavily. <laughs> as a, it definitely has a couple of the, themes. Uh, the, the list of rewards hasn't been finalised yet, but at the moment the list of the rewards is just the word cabbage with everything we can possibly put on the end. We just had a word generator to yeah. name all of the things. And so, so how much involvement do you guys feel you've had in the quest and will be having, I guess? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to take too much credit away from the content team because obviously they have done the bulk of the, the work. I don't want to sort of sit there and say, I've made this great quest when I've only, you know, yeah. <laughs> helped it a sort of design phase. But, you know, we, we've, we've done the sort of overarching sort of concept and, you know, seen the design and given some comments on it and put our own sort of, you know, slant on it. But, but yeah, I don't want to take too much away from the content team because they have done a lot of the design and, and you know, all the coding and everything. No, I've still got my full-time job, yeah. so <laughs> it's not like you know, it's not like we've put a huge amount of time into this. There's various points in the development where we'll come in and say yes, this seems to yeah. match what we wanted, and um, give feedback at various points. We actually we, we revised something this morning, but I can't say what it is because it's a total spoiler. But <laughs> a piece of feedback you gave us, we integrated into the design this morning, and we've oh, changed, that's good, then. We've changed how everything works because of that. Was oh, okay. Yeah. I'll be interested <laughs> to hear about that. <laughs> I'll tell you well, I had some interesting ideas, I felt. Um, yeah. <laughs> we'll work catching up in a few minutes. <laughs> yeah. um, so generally, uh, I'm, I was going to say, are you happy with how it's looking at the moment? But I know it looks like nothing at the moment. So we, uh, Yes, we don't have any art, unfortunately, yeah. for it. <laughs> so we can't show you any so pictures. At the moment, it looks like a lot of placeholder items we and were, some things. We were, having, we were having a meeting about it this morning. And I said to the others, uh, so it's uh, the, the main people who are going to be working on it as well are Mod Days, Mod Mohawk, and Mod Krista. And we were having a meeting this morning because Days had a problem. He didn't think that there was enough drama. And I said, I, I'm worried this is getting a bit too serious. And they all just laughed at me. <laughs> and then by the end of the meeting, we were all just in stitches. <laughs> going, yeah, this is going to be amazing. So. I thought you got a prototype of one of the puzzles sort of made or it's, something. No, he was, he was playing around with how the interface mechanics are going oh, to work. Okay, so it's, was, um, was it's not ready to play yet. Email, no, I don't it? think so. Okay, yeah. I was looking forward to looking at that. It is a prototype and it's a thing that moves and it is a puzzle. So oh, okay. That is that, okay. Like I've, seen seen, that I've seen a thing. Right. And there are some stuff. Oh, well, let's take you off. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to not be too specific. Yeah, no, we can't here, say what it is. Yeah, yeah. There's a puzzle in the quest. Um, yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Giving everything away now. Possibly a cabbage. Um, will it be a member's quest? Uh, no. That was very strict on your list of requirements, I believe. Yes. Must be, be a free quest. Um, Although we're really running out of room in the free any, game. Have we specified any requirements for any of this? We haven't. If it does have requirements, they'll be very low. We might very need low some level of the newbie quests or something. Potentially, like. yeah. But oh. we're not worrying too much about quest continuity or anything like Get that. Get through the tutorial just so you know you can do things. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Well, you have to be gone through the tutorial to actually get into the world, so that's fine. Um, I'm even I'm iffy asking this question. When can we expect to play this quest? Oh well, <laughs> do, I mean, you, do you tell, want me. To tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was told to say. Maybe sometime around the middle of the year. <laughs> maybe sometime around the middle of the year, possibly, we think, maybe. Maybe, yeah, no commitment. Right, geez, we're getting really specific on all of the things here. Uh, but this year. Are you expecting? Yeah. So this is the second thing that we've come onto this couch and said this will happen in this Definitely year. Definitely happen this year. I think it's meant to be year. a 15th anniversary it quest. It is, yes, so, so if it doesn't happen this year. It'll be a 16th anniversary quest otherwise. I yeah. guarantee it'll come out this year. Um, Will the quest be a standalone, or will it be a series? Uh, at the moment, we have no plans <laughs> for a sequel, but if it turns out to be awesome and everyone really likes it and wants to see more, then 
We can stick it. I don't see why we can't think about doing that. Yeah. There's no followed up by major cliffhangers at the end of it or anything. It's not. No, it's not a. It's not a. It's not woven into the plot. Part of what we're going for is. I mean. We're happy with the direction that we're taking the story of RuneScape, but some players who prefer the older, quirkier, less serious style of quests, that's exactly what we're trying to go for in yeah, this it's quest. Quite so, it's quite Yeah, not, exactly. Yeah. Don't go into this expecting some big sort of measure at sort of plot advancement or something no. like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think the, the idea of the bottle quests, we're trying to do more of them in the future anyway. This is, a, this is an absolutely perfect example of what we want to try and do. If it builds into something else, then you know, we'll see where the future takes us. Yeah. Is there anything else you like to, you feel I've missed? I mean, we've been incredibly vague. We're trying to get as many references in as possible. I mean, the first thing we did when we sat down was just go around the team and go, what should we talk about? And then just have a massive, massive list of everything we want to include, mostly cabbages, That squirrels. wasn't far off the brainstorm. It was just a wall of references. My favourite is Crunchy and Tim, who are the man and the skeleton who used to sit together in chairs in all yeah. the RuneScape screens and yeah. commercial Lots things. Lots of things which used to be in RuneScape in some sort of fashion. Get They're going in as characters so. if I can get them in. That's, that's what I want. So. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. So I think that, that pretty much covers what right. we can say about the quest right now. Yeah, I, think I mean, so, there yeah. will be more. We will do streams <laughs> as we come along. But uh, right now, I think that covers it. So I've been warned and screamed and shouted at, and I should definitely say this, that we... Uh, so we have... A call back to the past, and we will have RuneScape Classic reopening again next Monday. So that should be very exciting to try and see. If, um, let people who haven't seen it see what it was like back in the day. And those people who've uh, missed it and want a bit of nostalgia, it's a great chance to go and check it out.